Hi, and welcome to the Nonprofit World TV Show. I'm your host, Donna Hagiga. Today we have on our show Julia Rosenblatt from the Heartbeat Ensemble. She's the artistic director. Yep. And we also have with us Deborah Walsh, who's an ensemble member at yes. Heartbeat Ensemble. Heartbeat Ensemble is a local theater company and based in Hartford, Connecticut. And Julia, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what Heartbeat Ensemble does? Sure. Uh, well, we create original work um, based on whatever topics are most relevant in, in our community, in the world today. Uh, generally, most of our work is interview-based, so that is we'll take a topic, we'll interview um, lots of people on the topic, and that's how we'll create our script. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's part of our what we call main stage program. Um, and then we have our education programs, which... Um, use theater as a tool for peaceful conflict resolution in classrooms and play creation. Um, and then we have our neighborhood investigative projects where we go from one neighborhood to another collecting interviews and doing a piece based on those interviews just for that neighborhood about topics that are really going on in their, in their little, the world right in there. Yeah. So I think I remember, um, hearing a little bit about that uh, with the Asylum Hill neighborhood, yeah. which is where you're located. Right. What are some of the other neighborhoods in Hartford that you've done this neighborhood investigation piece? And do you do this with adults only or are children involved? Right, so we, uh, mostly adults, but there are children involved. Certainly for interviewing, we've done some yes. interviewing mm -hmm. of children. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we've done West End, uh, Asylum Hill, uh, Frog Hollow, and we're about to move on to Barry Square. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So the goal is all every you know all of the sixteen neighborhoods in Hartford. And Deborah, your title is ensemble director, but it sounds like you're doing a lot more than just being a member, a cast member. Let's say it sounds like to me. Well, it, a heartbeat ensemble is celebrating its fifteenth anniversary this year, which is fabulous. And it and you've been with the theater company how long? Well, I did an action um, when the company was doing theater on the street in 2003, and I became an ensemble member in 2006. And so I've been involved in a lot of the projects, mostly as an actor. Mm -hmm. I directed one summer, and I did a neighborhood investigative project in, in Asylum Hill, mm -hmm. where I did most of the interviewing. Okay, so yeah. you have done some directing and interviewing yes, as well. Yes, yes, and some and, writing. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like being involved in Heartbeat Ensemble, a smaller theater company, gives you that breadth of right. experience as well. Right. right. There's right. very few people who have just who do just one thing sure. in the ensemble. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mentioned the 15th anniversary. I was excited to hear about it. How are you both or the company celebrating that 15th year mark, milestone? Well, two, two things. One is we had a wonderful um, 15th anniversary bash at uh, Black Eyed Sally's back mm -hmm. in September. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was great. We did a retrospective of Heartbeat's work. We had um, video footage and and. Uh, and photos from all 15 years. So that was a, a beautiful thing. And then in honor of our 15th uh, season, we're bringing back Ebenezer, A Hartford mm -hmm. Holiday Carol, which is our holiday show mm -hmm. that we did for six years okay. um, and haven't done in a few years. So we haven't done it in our own. This is our first time doing it in our own theater. Mm -hmm. And so. speaking of your own theater, can you tell our viewers where the theater is located? Sure. It's uh, the Carriage House Theater. Mm -hmm. It's at 360 Farmington Avenue, so it's right across from the Mark Twain House okay. on Farmington Ave. Yes, and I have been in that space, and I've been very excited to see uh, several of your productions, but I think the one that I was most taken with was Gross Domestic Product, which I was able to see in its final full right. play version last spring, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. But I was also lucky to see the two other versions of it, or, or they were, I guess, leading up to the full play. Yep. Can you explain how yeah. your company does that, goes sure. from zero to right. play? So, we, so as I said, we most often, though not totally, start with interviews on a topic. So this topic for gross domestic product was motherhood and looking at motherhood as what it would be like if it were paid work and if it were valued as part of the gross domestic product. Um, so once we've been writing for a while, um, I, we go into rehearsals and then we do what's, what we have, what you saw was two workshop versions. Mm -hmm. So over the course of two years, we, we brought it up, we had whatever, basically whatever was ready at that time mm -hmm. to put out there for the audience and get feedback into what worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I think in the ones that you saw, we actually the first workshop, the first iteration was very different yes, um, was. than the second. Yep. I mm -hmm. and, that, and that happens sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. We we put it out there, um, and it had a lot of good stuff, and then it was like, oh wait, no, I think we need to take a different artistic turn. Mm -hmm. And the next year it looked really different, and then we built off of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all part of it. Even some of the old, you know. The, earliest stuff comes back in at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, being an audience member, that was really unique to actually be asked what your feedback was, what you liked, what you didn't like, and so forth. So that was actually a really fun experience cool. as well. Well, that's mm -hmm. pretty centered to what we want to do, is that yeah. we always want it to be interactive. Sure. Yeah. So tell me, uh, what, do you, what lies ahead? What types of uh, interviews are you working on now, or other mm -hmm. uh, productions uh, beyond Ebenezer that you're excited about mm -hmm. that we can look forward to. Well, we've got, uh, we're bringing back um, Jimmy and Lorraine, which was our show. This is the one piece that wasn't interview based. Uh, and that's uh, written by Talvin Wilkes, who worked with the company on this project. And it's about James Baldwin and Lorraine Hainsbury and mm -hmm. their friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at that specific period in time um, in our country through their eyes. Um, and then we have a women's theater festival that we're doing, and so that's going to be three workshops like you saw of all different women in the ensemble, uh, um, our creations. So, and we have Barry Square, which is our next neighborhood project. So that's that. Mm -hmm. I think that pretty much goes, and then our education programs are always going as well. The education program. So you go out to the schools, or do you do some things at the theater as well? We do both. So Start in Drama mm -hmm. is our conflict resolution program. And that one we generally do in schools or after school organizations. And that's where we um, will talk to the school or the organization ahead of time, find out what some common conflicts, social conflicts kids get into often, create scenes about them, and then we'll go into uh, the school and um, perform those scenes. And then the audience, is who are the, you know, the, the students, have a chance to tell us how to change the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and then they actually have a chance to come up and play the same role and change the scene. Mm -hmm. So the idea is it's sort of practice for real life in mm -hmm. terms of peaceful conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Those are mostly in schools. Our Youth Play Institute, which is a um, paid internship for 16 to 21 year olds, mm -hmm. where they create a piece based on our methods of interviewing and, rehearse and research, that's done at the theater. And is that a, like a summer camp thing or it's, after school? We do three sessions. Mm -hmm. We do two school year sessions for eight weeks. They meet twice, and, twice a week on, in the evenings. And then we have one summer intensive one for five weeks. And uh, am I correct in saying it's heartbeatensemble.org? Yes. The, yes. So if anyone's interested in finding out about these programs, do go visit heartbeatensemble.org, the website, to find out more about their productions and particularly the educational program. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask a little bit more from you, Deborah, about the interviewing experience. Is that something that is uh, sort of a standard set of interview questions that you do, or is it very iterative based on? On who you're interviewing. It's a very intimate experience mm -hmm. with the people you're interviewing. I found it to be that. Um, but first I wanted to say when you asked about how did we celebrate 15 years, yes. being an ensemble member is a celebration <laughs> because it's an opportunity to grow not only as an artist but as a person. And um, I've been teaching at this Arts Academy, the Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts, for almost 30 years. Julia was my student. <laughs> was wow. She was the first, the greatest, the, but the greatest joy any teacher can have is to see your students become the teacher mm -hmm. and mature into an artist and have a vision. Sure. And then my, I see my former students, uh, someone is stage managing Ebenezer, I'm acting with them now. And um, so that's, that's why it's a celebration, even though like every arts community, we're struggling. I mean, I've cleaned toilets mm -hmm. when we had mm -hmm. to at different events, mm -hmm. you know, all hands on deck. Sure. Um, and so when I took this experience on to do the interviewing, I didn't know how much, of a, how much I would grow as a person to like, um, I was interviewing people who live on a, a, a people who are very poor and have like no advantage at all. And so to gain trust, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I kept thinking, wow, I'm benefiting so much from this. I'm finding out what I'm made of. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, prejudices and fears that I had that I had to completely leap over mm. to talk to another human being mm. about their experience. And that's very intimate and you can't have rote questions. Sure. But then our responsibility is to take their story and sometimes people wanted things kept out of the plays, mm -hmm. but make it an artistic experience, like give a, a value and communicate their experience in the world in a way that really served the heart of their story mm -hmm. and the heart of the mission of the project. Mm -hmm. So I, I never knew what was going to happen. I'm still involved mm -hmm. um, as working on in this particular neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, the Barry a, Square one, or it's not Barry Asylum Square. Hill. Oh, it was Asylum, Asylum Hill, Hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we meet eight in the morning. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're an early riser, I know. I'm an early riser, <laughs> but still, and um, just to see how this play mm -hmm. has affected the community groups who wanted to do work. This play really had an impact on now the services and how the groups go in and provide services. Mm -hmm. So theater is such a valuable not only um, an educator, but it's a, a convener, uh, sounds like, yeah, right? Yeah, a way to life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as my teacher said. And in Asylum Hill, I know uh, that there are um, uh, probably about 30 percent of the community is immigrants. Right. Uh, so were there individuals that you were uh, trying to interview yes. that were immigrants? And yes. how, how was that experience with the language barrier? and? Well, so there had been inroads made into the Karen, mm -hmm. so we knew some people who helped us uh, translate, mm -hmm. and through programs at the Hartford Public Library, mm -hmm. and um, some of the second generation kids mm -hmm. would translate for their for their family. Mm -hmm. There were some immigrants staying at a shelter, mm -hmm. so we always had someone who would help translate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that helped because if someone trusted the translator, that the sure. translator trusted the interviewer, right. it went a That little gave smoother. you credibility because right. there, were, yeah. there was trust there. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And what, what has been the uh, reaction? I know you were mentioning that oftentimes, you know, individuals are you know feel very vulnerable and sometimes there's parts of their story that they don't want necessarily portrayed or done in a certain way and so forth but it sounds like overall the feedback has been um, very positive from them of the experience can you give us some examples or an example of you that you can think of of somebody who then saw the results of the interview in a play and and you know what their reaction was well, there was this, piece. this one woman who did any work that she could to support her drug habit. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, so I was able to tell her about the Berlin Turnpike play. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that she felt like she wasn't the only person who had done that and let her children down and mm -hmm. ended up on the streets. You mean mm -hmm. having seen it? Having, mm -hmm. having experienced it. And, the, and mm -hmm. the interview, and then we were, we had some neighborhood meetings that were successful too. Mm -hmm. um, and also when, um, like the first Heartbeat play I saw, mm -hmm. I went with my friend who was a factory worker, it was called Graves. Mm -hmm. She was like, wow, this is about me. Mm -hmm. And so the play was about mm -hmm me, you know, not me, me, but me, the me, right. it's the me's in the world. Sure. And it was so validating mm -hmm. that, you know, the things you worry about, the way, the choices you had to make, even though they were painful or difficult or not the smartest ones, were still presented in a way that was understandable. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it really changes people's lives, but it, it definitely, um, I think, can bring people together. Mm -hmm. Process is slow. And empowers people. Empowers yeah. people. The, the, the sheer sense of identity, you know, from, from people who don't see themselves personified mm -hmm. on the screen mm -hmm. very often mm -hmm. or, or on stage very often. Right. Actually having an identity, you know, be reflected back is, is empowering in and of itself. It's interesting that you say that because the word I was thinking of was a mirror uh, yeah. in some ways that yeah. it's giving them mm -hmm. uh, a different angle or a lens to see their own life because, you know, all, all of us are too close to our own lives mm -hmm. uh, to see it. I know that you mentioned uh, in our conversation the Berlin Turnpike play for those who um, weren't able to see it. Uh, I was able to see it and it was a play that was about human trafficking that was occurring on the Berlin Turnpike, you know, not too far from where we all 
all are. And I think it was a very, very educational, very disturbing in many ways play, but it really brought home the uh, understanding that this happens in our backyard. Uh, this isn't just something that right. happens, you know, between Russia and other countries or, or so forth. So um, I thank you for, for um, you know, you do educational programming, but often your plays in, of, in and of themselves are educational. So. Well, it breaks the myth mm -hmm. that the um, sex worker could be in your seventh grade math class. Yes and not someone who was, you know, sent over in a bin from the Ukraine, which is also happening. Mm -hmm, you don't mean right. to invalidate that. Mm -hmm. But domestic sex, sex trafficking mm -hmm. is, it's in our faces all the time. Yes, yeah. yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the theater. I like the fact that it's a nice small theater. Yeah. Um, was that intentional? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so one of the, I mean, the intimate, it's a very intimate mm. theater, it's 77 seats. Mm -hmm. um, and even just the layout of that, you feel there's, you know, there's that not a bad seat in the house, mm -hmm. but it's more than that in that you really feel like you're just sitting there with the artist and, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's very intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it helps us to deal, to, to tell different stories and to get both the humor and the the um, uh, the pathos there. One interesting thing is that um, we've so Ebeneza we used to do, and this is our first time in, in our theater, oh, and yeah. doing it in such a smaller, more intimate venue as mm -hmm. opposed to these. We would we would travel around, so we did it in Union Halls. We mm -hmm. did it at the West Indian Social Club, and these those were vast mm -hmm. you know places. Yeah. And rehearsing it now, we're tr we're figuring it out how it lives in this smaller, mm -hmm. intimate space mm -hmm. yeah. and how much more communication there is in, with the audience. Mm -hmm. So it's affected, I know it's affected your, your acting choices and directing. Yeah, yeah. How big of a cast does Ebenezer have? Seven. Okay. And two children and oh. five adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. yeah. How do you get the word out about your plays, Ebenezer coming up, and also uh, your educational programs mm -hmm. as well? Tell us a little about that. Um, well, certainly uh, the Har newspaper, Hartford Current, there'll be a preview um, coming out soon about Ebenezer. Social media is, mm -hmm. is definitely very big. Um, and uh, we do send e-blasts, we have our mailing lists. Um, a lot of what we're doing right now, in, especially around the holidays, is, um, and this is a really good thing that's happening, is arts organizations are, are doing a lot of uh, marketing swaps. Mm -hmm. So we're helping each other growing mm -hmm. our, all of our audiences, yeah. which feels really good. That's smart. Um, mm -hmm. So our program will show Hartford Stage and Theater Works, and their, and their programs will show ours as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of education, um, that's actually something we're kind of working on how to make broader okay. um, at this point in terms of we've been in every Hartford school mm -hmm. um, for several years mm -hmm. and, and we're working now to see how we can expand. Mm -hmm. And so uh, expanding really, you know, sort of going out beyond that geography a little bit. Right. So you're not necessarily because you're called Heartbeat Ensemble, you're not constrained to stay right within the confines of Hartford. Then. Right. Well, right. right. I mean, Hartford is, mm -hmm. you know, it's greater Hartford. Hartford is the, you know, is mm -hmm. the capital. Mm -hmm we see it all as a region. Sure. I think the more we see this area as a region, the better off we'll be. And also because you go to the schools with this uh, programming. So really mm -hmm. if a school in Farmington, let's say, uh, you know, thinks it's really interesting what you're doing, then they should give me a call. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and, and can we um, review again what are the topics that generally have sure. been, or at, at least uh, up until now? Drama, yes. You mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, so start and drama can deal. It's a social. A lot of social issues. So mm -hmm. we deal with cyberbullying. We mm -hmm. deal with. Um, with uh, racism and sexism in the classroom, um, homophobia, we deal, but then also like really um, just ways to have a conversation as opposed mm -hmm. to having an argument. Um, sure. Really, you know, some, some basic empathy skills, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, empathy and empowerment are, are our two. Mm -hmm. Our two focuses on that. Wonderful. Yeah. And what age range uh, in the school system do you tend to? Third grade. So that program is used third grade through tenth grade. Mm -hmm. So and there, of course we ch uh, modify it for the mm -hmm. different age groups. And have you done any work with uh, university classes at all? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we've taught in all the universities mm -hmm. um, in terms of doing master workshops and mm -hmm. um, on on our method, but then also on conflict resolution work, mm -hmm. uh, theater of the oppressed, which is a type of theater that we base a lot of our whole education program mm -hmm. on. Now, Julia, you were one of the founders of Heartbeat Ensemble. 
tell us just uh, quickly how it was founded and what you 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 know see for the next 15 years. Um, we were it was my partners Greg Tate and Steve Ginsburg and I and we were acting uh, we were all a part of the San Francisco Mime Troupe in San Francisco which is not mime but um, <laughs> uh, political broad political satire. Okay. Um, and the company itself, the mime, mime trip is now 55 years old or something. So um, the three of us decided to break off and form our own company, try some new things. And when we did that, we quickly realized that San Francisco did not need another such company. <laughs> um, and I grew up here mm -hmm. and I had just been back to visit and said, gosh, you know, Hartford might be exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it was and still is one of the poorest cities in the country and the capital of, of the richest per capita state in the country. So mm -hmm. it's ripe for a lot of good uh, theater and and uh, and social awareness and you know story. Mm -hmm. So that's we started. That was two thousand one. We moved here, um, and uh, five days after nine eleven. Um, that's and that's wow. why we ended up, that wasn't the plan, but we ended up doing a lot of street theater, um, mm -hmm. excuse me, that, mm -hmm. uh, that, um, that first couple of years. What I see for the next 15 years, um, <laughs> not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I think, um, uh, I think it's really about building our season, first of all, mm -hmm. um, making sure that our season really, you know, we've just gotten to the point where we're now doing two main stage plays, um. A, a year. Um, it's about broadening our neighborhood investigative projects to even go a step beyond and maybe help stay with communities longer the mm -hmm. way Deborah's actually doing on her own okay. um, and using theater as a tool that way. Mm -hmm. um, and education certainly is about broadening our, our scope of education work. The way we see it, you know, the next at least four years is mm -hmm. going to, there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll get to it. And then uh, in terms of original works, that's still going to be your goal yes. is really producing original works. Right. So mm -hmm. we do through these workshops, mm -hmm. that's how we vet pieces. We mm -hmm. decide what's ready to go and that's how we and are you, um, after 15 years of experience under your belt, are you feeling a little bit more like you understand kind of how long it takes to get something from uh, concept to actual yes. play? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and that, and that. However, it always takes twice as long as I think it's going to take. <laughs> but now I allow for that a little more. Yes. So, for instance, with gross domestic product, where you know what was the? I had expected it to be done runway. a year earlier than it had, okay. mm -hmm. but because we took a turn that mm -hmm. I didn't realize we were going to take, I, mm -hmm. we had to take more time with it. And that's just, that's, mm -hmm. that's what you have to do. It's part of the process. And what happens to a play once you have debuted it? Yeah. Uh, is it something that you then shop to other <coughs> theaters? Or? Sometimes we do that. Yes. We tour um, oh, when we tour. can. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, flip side, our last mm -hmm. show we toured, Ebenezer mm -hmm. we toured for several years. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we're working on uh, touring Jimmy and Lorraine. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the play and mm -hmm. what kind of life it, it has after that. How it's adaptable. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you see more of that as well in the future with your Definitely, plays. and that's really capacity building. And how far have you toured? Like how far? Uh, you... We've been to California, we've been wow. across, mm -hmm. um, and then done a lot of regional mm -hmm. uh, Northeast touring as Heartbeat well. Heartbeat Ensemble goes on the road then. New yep. York, the New York okay. Fringe Festival where oh, okay. Flipside won an award. Mm -hmm. Best yeah. Ensemble. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Great. Yeah. And after, do you know what the two main stage plays are going to be for the next season? For the next season? season? <coughs> well, that'll depend on what happens at the uh, theater, the Women's Theater Festival. Oh, and tell me a little bit more about the Women's Theater Festival. Mm -hmm. What time of year is that taking So that'll place? be in April. Okay. Uh, April, May. Mm -hmm. Actually, the end of April and the beginning of May. And mm -hmm. each week will be a different workshop of a different piece from one of the women in the ensemble. Okay. Um, and so based on that, we'll choose the two that are sort of furthest ahead to go mm -hmm. and those will be our, our premieres for next season. Mm -hmm. And your ensemble though of course is not just women. Is no, yeah. no, we're, uh, we're mm -hmm. pretty even I mm -hmm. think. They're, we're an ensemble of nine and mm -hmm. we have four men and five women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful though that you are um, promoting and celebrating the works of women playwrights because as we know historically that hasn't been the case and you know once uh, you know, a lot of other theater companies then take their plays from New York or wherever, right. and so it's like a series of unfortunate events once a, a woman right. play, right, doesn't get her play, you know, produced yeah. somewhere. The, the, the statistics on how many women playwrights are, are produced as opposed to men are 
staggering. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. hard to believe it's 2016. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So well, thank you for doing that mm -hmm. uh, and doing your part in getting more women, uh, you know, their works seen by people as well. So any parting last uh, things that you would like our audience to know? Let's plug Ebenezer. Yes, let's do that. Um, yeah, Ebenezer goes up uh, December 1st through the 11th, um, so two weeks only. And it's a show. It is a modern day Hartford retelling of uh, of the, Dickens, uh, thank Christmas, you, Dickens Carol. Christmas Carol, yes. uh, using all of the holidays and using a lot of Hartford history, going from Front Street oh, in the 30s mm -hmm. to um, the North End in the 60s mm -hmm. to Bloomfield in the 80s. It's it's oh, got a neat. lot. It's a wonderful show. And from what I understand, Front Street didn't that used to be the Italian uh, it was area? right so. right until it was torn down to build. Mm -hmm. Constitution Plaza. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we deal with all of that. And all Ebenezer that. is an right. Italian is from an Italian immigrant family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Front Street originally. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, for our viewers, if you want to learn more about Heartbeat Ensemble, please visit heartbeatensemble.org. And we hope to see you at the Carriage House Theater soon and also learn more about their educational programs as well.